Hello everyone, and welcome back to World of Warship Splits with Terry. Today, we'll be looking at the Admiral Hipper, my first tier 8 ship. Back in the day when the German line was pretty new, I was starting to grind up and I came up to the Nuremberg, and I loved the Nuremberg. I didn't really understand anything about gun caliber, heavy cruisers, light cruisers back then quite yet, uh, in regards to, to the game, but um, I loved the Nuremberg, and I kind of skipped over the York. Because back in the day, I think the York only had a quad launcher of torpedoes. And I didn't like that, because I was using my torpedoes quite a bit. That was back in the time when battleship drivers would literally put their ship into forward and then keep sailing forward for the rest of the game without steering left, right, or changing their speed. So you could very easily be torpedo boat and uh, sink them that way. So I figured, no, um, I'm going to free XP my way forward to the Hipper. So that was my first tier 8. And she did play a bit differently, but I still like this ship absolutely. She definitely is one of my favorite ships, and one reason why she doesn't have the historical camo, I'll explain that later. Anyway, the Admiral Hipper. So th that ship had a very, very interesting history. She was a treaty cruiser, which means that uh, on, on paper she was limited to 10,000 tons. In practice, uh, she had more like 16, I think. <laughs> Uh, you know, the, the Germans at the time kind of took things more like suggestions, stuff like contracts and international obligations, not so much as, as actual things you have to, to abide by. So she was definitely a bit on the heavy side for things. And um, after a relatively eventful tour through the Atlantic, she was eventually transferred into Norway, because what had happened was that the Germans invaded the Soviet Union. And now... The capitalist West <laughs> couldn't possibly have the communist East lose against the Germans because that would be bad. And so we actually, they actually supported them. Which means that the Americans and the British were running convoys uh, across the Arctic route through the waters north of Norway uh, across into the Soviet Union to help them against the Germans. Different times. <laughs> so... Obviously, the Germans didn't like that very much. So what they did was uh, try as much as they could to stop these convoys from happening. And there was a previous very infamous convoy, which was quite of, uh, which was quite unusual, such that it... They got a bit scared that I think the Tirpitz was going to come. And everybody was scared of the Tirpitz at the time. So they decided to scatter the convoy. Which then obviously meant that the German submarines and air, <laughs> and air Force literally went to town on them and sunk most of them. Which made the Soviets so angry that they didn't even believe that the, this convoy even properly existed. Because they couldn't imagine that they lost that many ships. But they tried again. And this time around they sent a bunch of destroyers with them. And the Germans decided, okay, let's send... The Admiral Hipper and I think the Lutzo, which was a Deutschland class, so um, Graf Spee class sort of thing, uh, pocket battleship sort, and a bunch of destroyers of their own out to, to intercept that convoy. And then what happened was that, well, it was in December. And if you're that far north in December, it's basically night all, <laughs> all day long. So it was a bit dark. And they all got a little bit confused. <laughs> so things happened like uh, one of the German destroyers trying to fall into formation with a British cruiser. Well, just to find itself at the receiving end of very, very angry 150mm shells. <laughs> and also similar things happened on the British side. Uh, nobody was really sure who was where or uh, what was really going on. And Hipper got uh, got fired upon which, what I, I think was a bunch of town class cruisers, but they did manage to, uh, to eventually, you know, cause some damage to her. And they both got scared that their respective destroyer screens would torpedo them. So both sides actually more or less withdrew as much as that was possible in that chaos, that, um, and then gave up on the whole thing. So, the British lost, I think, a destroyer and a minesweeper. The Germans lost the destroyer. Um, everybody went on their business. The convoy got through and um, uh, Hitler was so pissed about this that he basically ordered the whole German surface fleet scrapped and everybody just building submarines from then on. Because <laughs> um, that, well, the whole thing didn't end so well. So uh, Donitz, who was, who was made the new 
new commander of the everything, what, what was floating, eventually convinced him to not do that and actually just at least retain the things that were already floating around. But uh, the hippo was well back for repairs and then eventually got interned and then not really ever, never really ever men, uh, ventured, ventured out anymore after this whole debacle. But, um, you know, it was dark and everybody was confused and nobody knew who was where and <laughs> people were shooting, stuff was sunk, so in general I'd call that a success. Anyway, the Admiral Hipper in the game, tier 8 heavy cruiser. Now, the York was already heavy cruiser and the York is very, very special in that she had great uh, high explosive shells. Not so much the Hipper. The Hipper has a very, very good protection for a heavy cruiser. She is really one of the sturdiest ship out there when it comes to, to cruisers at this tier. And um, she is reasonably fast and actually reasonably maneuverable with my setup. Again, I try... I, I, this is a German cruiser. You need to play her aggressively. Otherwise, you're not really getting that much done. So you can't set stuff on fire because the AG is terrible. So uh, maneuverability is an important factor. The guns, oh, glorious German 200 millimeter guns. 9.5 second reload, but they do almost a thousand armor piercing damage. Uh, forget about the high explosive. The high explosive isn't great. Uh, the penetration is, is terrible. And so you're at best gonna do 250 damage per shell. If you are range shooting at something sturdy, like an American battleship or a German battleship, yeah, yeah you could use them, but honestly, if you um, if you're shooting at things from range with the hipper, you're not in the right not, you're not where you're supposed to be anyway. And if you're close enough to battleships that you can actually aim at the weak spots, then um, you may as well use the armor piercing. I've citadeled things like a Nelson in this, or Japanese battleships are fun to citadel on a hipper. <laughs> uh, very very good armor piercing. You got to be a little bit careful against destroyers at close range because you will over penetrate them. But um, you've got torpedoes for that kind of scenario. Four triple launchers, the same standard German 533 mil torpedoes, 5.4 kilometer range, meh, not great. But then again, if you're not close up with a German ship, you're not doing it right. And you've got, you've got a lot of them and the angles aren't half bad either. So she kind of has this, a very, very similar complement than you had in the previous ships, the Nuremberg, the York. Her AA is okay. It's nothing special. You will shoot down the occasional aircraft, but this is not a support cruiser per se. I mean, you can, but she really, really isn't. The surface detection is, is all right, 8.7 kilometers. We have more, one of the more visible cruisers. In terms of uh, ship bonus, I have gone with the improved main armor belt to get the to get the to get her up armored basically. So you get a bit more damage reduction and you get a bit better citadel protection. And then she feels tankier this way. Now the turret rotation is is not the greatest with nine degrees, but you're kind of used to that from American ships as well. And it's 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 all right. You get the turrets on target eventually. In terms of modules, I have the main battery mod one to get um, to get the relight time down. It would be extremely well to you or ex an extremely good choice to use the mod main battery mod three for dispersion because she is not the most accurate ship out there. But then again, she's a German cruiser. I like to play these things up close and personal. So if I'm five kilometer from an enemy ship, then I don't need dispersion. <laughs> I just need to pull the trigger. So that's why I went with the with the reload modification. In the other two slots here are both the steering gear mods. And again, this is because well, fast ship, slim ships don't turn very well. She is uh, a bit of a hog otherwise. And when you're playing close range, you want to be maneuverable. Um, I would have loved the deck protection mod, like all other German ships. I personally find that she gets on set on fire quite a bit, but um, well, <laughs> I did need that steering mod. Anyway, the commander, he's been sitting on the hipper for a while uh, you've, and he has the obvious choices for the first two. You, you, you don't really need a fourth, uh, a fourth hydro. So oh, we, actually before we, since I mentioned it, let's, let's have a quick look. So you get three hydros and three precise aiming. The precise aiming compensates a bit with, uh, um, with the dispersion. So again, Yes, you could make her a long-range sniper, 
And it's not a terrible setup for her, actually, because these guns are very, very good. But mm, I like playing them close up, so different setup. So, yes, you have three hydros, that's sufficient. I have the artillery maintenance for the opening stages of the battle. The victorious charge. I actually have not gone with the fire supremacy because, again, you don't really need four precise aiming. Instead, having the survivalist because it's it's more suitable towards my playstyle of uh, getting my hands dirty in the ship. I do have recon and surveillance in here for um, the improved sonar. And I have the marksman skill for actually improving the, uh, the precise aiming. Other things you'll obviously, obviously want when you're getting higher. Uh, adrenaline rush, for me at least, makes a lot of sense. And uh, the uh, APCS, definitely given the uh, given how often I use armor piercing and how well how, how hard hitting these 200 millimeter armor piercing shells are, definitely what I would be using. So, all right. Uh, the, before we go into battle, the reason I don't have the historical camo is because I actually have this, which is the Prince Eugen which is an Admiral Hipper class cruiser, <laughs> which is the premium version of it. And it, I have the camo on that one. So I, I tend to, pr to play the Eugen a little bit more than the Hipper occasionally, which is why I haven't really bothered to, um, to put the camo on. But um, the historical camos are good on these things because they increase the torpedo range. Uh, let me quickly double check that. Uh, yeah, they increase the torpedo range. And that can sometimes mean the difference between hitting and not hitting. So if you if you want to keep playing the ship at tier eight for well a lot, and you don't have the Eugen and you really like the ship and you want to have the historical camo, uh, it's worth it for for that factor for this uh, for this slightly extended torpedo range alone. But enough talk. Let's get into a battle. All right, we've got a carrier in play. Uh, not the best. Turpids very dangerous. Mogami very dangerous. And only one destroyer. There's a Benson over here. And we've got a pretty good, um, a pretty good division on our side. So well, let's see how this plays out. Bay of Storms. All right, we've got a battleship and a destroyer here, so we're the perfect complement. And um, obviously, we want to watch out for the corner there in the middle. Run that island. Okay. Uh, defense. We're playing defensive. Okay. Let's play. Let's play for the defensive setup, which means I will get close to the island because I need to intercept any. If the destroyer is on this side, I need to get. I need to intercept the destroyer and uh, uh, get around this corner, really. Um, and just just make sure that nothing comes around here and can hurt the battleship while the Colorado there gives us fire support. So, yes. Could somebody please, like destroyer or someone? Why are you smoking? Oh dear. <laughs> oh dear, we have some special players over here. Okay, um, yeah, someone needs to pay. Okay, I'm spotted. Uh, nothing's in range. I could have been air spotted, possibly. I'll pop the Hydra regardless, because I think the destroyer might be around here. Uh, there are some torpedoes coming, at least. So I think he's poked back uh, behind. Okay, North Carolina comes pushing. So, um, Mayhem, you're up. Okay, there he goes. Uh, there's a New Orleans. Okay, Mayhem, you look at the North Carolina. I'll try to drive the New Orleans off. And, um... Okay. I'm the only cruiser here, am I? Yeah, I am. Okay, so he drops way from a distance on the North Cal. Let's try to get the New Orleans. No, no, don't shoot him. That's the Mayhem, that's my ship. Don't ignore me. There you go. Shoot at me. <laughs> okay, New Orleans. I got a couple of bounces of the turrets, maybe. Let's see. Okay, okay. he's got fighters up to keep me spotted, Precise but that's not necessary. I'm, a, I'm I'm visible well out of range. So I'm I'm angling in against the North Carolina, and you know, as as predicted, um, yeah, I think the the Mayhem is not necessarily an experienced player because they dropped way from a distance against the North Carolina, which is basically sailing in a straight line. But I don't know what the North Carolina is shooting at it uh, either. So I'm just keeping my nose. She's not shooting at me at least. I'm just keeping my nose in. And um, keeping the fire up against the New Orleans. And actually not really managing. Sturdy, sturdy things these are. Come on you. Need to get a little bit closer. There we go. That's better. Uh, that hurts if I keep doing that. Okay, the North Carolina goes back. And our battleship seems to be trying to sail into the next map. Oh well. 
Okay, um, I'm getting cross-fired. Okay, I'm getting fired by both the North Carolina and by the New Orleans. So, I'm gonna drop some torpedoes because we need to make something happen here, people. And, ow. Yep, that hurt, but I can take that one. Okay, I'm trying to aim f uh, towards the um, the bow of the battleship if I'm firing, but um, I'm just reversing back again and getting uh, getting the crossfire out of the New Orleans. Unfortunately, the New that means the New Orleans has mine. Oh yeah, there we go. Has my uh, broadside, so... Uh, Turpets and low health, okay, just keep the fire up. And uh, I think the torpedoes didn't hit the uh, didn't hit the North Cal. Um, not sure where he's got his gun pointed. I thought he had his gun pointed at me, that's why I backed up again. But he's not firing anymore. We hit the enemy. Then there come what are you, why are you smoking again? Drop your top rush that thing! Just go on the other side, you're rushing from the from the bow, okay. So we've got the turbines down, and our our battleship seems to have gotten himself unstuck from the island. How's the other side looking like? Not so great. There's a destroyer, and oh yeah, finally there you go. That's how you do it. Uh, okay. So the destroyer is empty, which means he's going to disengage, which means I'm going to have to rush this thing and finish her off if we want to be if we want to pull anything off here. This is going to cost me some health probably. So again, I'm kind of trying to keep uh, shooting at the stern to get some penetrations in. There we go. Oh, there's the Mogami as well. And it looks like uh, the rest of our team is not doing too well up in the cup. Okay, so let's see if we can nice if we can pull anything. Uh, yeah, I'm just waiting for his main guns to... There come the mains, okay. And now he's accelerating. He thinks I had torpedoes dropped. No, I've been waiting for your main guns. And now you're dead before you can reload your mains. And I'm on fire and I have to damage con a single fire because I am on very low health. Which is unfortunate because there's a Mogami over there and I don't like these things. <laughs> they set fires and I'm in a German ship. I'm extremely flammable. Okay, that New Orleans needs to die first because he's got the harder hitting guns and the Mogami is shooting at someone else, but the New Orleans is shooting at me. There comes the Mayhem. Okay, um, it looks like our cup is kind of under contest, being contested. There's still a destroyer over there. So let's see if we can finish these cruisers off and push into the enemy cup. Well, they're not. Well, they're occupied. Enemy okay. Then hopefully that. Oh, no, I don't. Here comes the carrier. He's gonna set me on fire, isn't he? Yes. Oh no. Four thousand, and I'm on fire. Of course, the one, the one moment when you don't need carriers, he comes for. He could have, couldn't for the destroyer. Anyway, uh, legit target. I am okay. Mogami is a lot quicker than I thought, so ranged in. Mogami has torpedoes, but his his angles are terrible, so he's not gonna be able to torp me from there. Uh, can I? I'm on 800 health. Can I kill this Mogami? I just need a good citadel. Okay, Torps out. Torps before he kills me. Okay, he got me. <laughs> uh, uh, and the carrier would have finished me off otherwise, because the destroyer died as well. But can I? Yeah! You didn't expect that, did you? <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Oh, it's not enough. It's not enough. Come on, carrier. Can you sink that destroyer at least for a draw? You've got torpedo bombers out. You just need to sink that destroyer. You got 10 seconds. 10 seconds. Can you do that? Uh, it's hard to hit destroyers with torpedoes. And uh, no, doesn't look like. Okay. Well, we did what we could. But um, that's the enemy Benson. Yeah, well done. I think he dropped. He saw me and then went to the other side. So. Yes, that's how you can play the hipper. You can um, <laughs> you can take revenge on a Mogami yes, for once. Uh, yes, you you can. I didn't know that the Benson had changed sides until it was too late, and I was already committed on that side. Otherwise, I might have decided to go on the other side, uh, towards the other side of the map. But um, you can play her aggressively. You can rush battleships. I was got unlucky with my first top drop. A little bit more distance would have been good and I would have gotten these torps sunk in but um, she's a great ship she's a great cruiser she's not the greatest destroyer hunter out there but if you if you can get fire out against destroyers at range you can definitely make them hurt and um, yeah it's a bit unfortunate that uh, we lost the other side of the map so so badly I was kind of hoping that the carrier would be able to do something there because he was focused over there with together with two battleships, but um, well, it is what it is. <laughs> anyway, uh, that yeah, that's the hipper, uh, hard hitting, armor piercing, uh, short range torpedoes, but a sturdy ship, 
And if you don't sit broadside onto enemy battleships, you can do a fair amount of damage and um, you can handle pretty much any other cruiser that, that's out there. The only thing she doesn't like is being set on fire from long range. So be a little bit careful with the Japanese AG spammers or with things like a shores if, they're, if you're getting into a long range duel because you're going to lose that. They've got more guns and they'll set you on fire and burn you down. She's a bit more on the battleship side than on the light cruiser side, definitely, in terms of playstyle. But um, I absolutely like this ship and her her um, her sister, the Eugen, is a very, very good ship as well. We'll do a comparison at some point. Anyway, that's it for today. I'll see you all next time. Bye.